Hey you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the great state of West Virginia, more specifically Cameron, West Virginia. And even more specifically than that, we're in front of the archive of the afterlife. This is a paranormal museum out here in West Virginia that uh, chronicles uh, items that have spiritual energy or, or spirits attached to them. They actually accept donations from all over the world to acquire haunted objects to place in this museum. Now as we go through, uh, I want you guys to help me out. Just honestly, if you see anything interesting, we're going to be showing a lot of haunted items in this video. If you see anything unusual, if you notice anything, leave a comment in the comments section so we can all go back and have a look. So please, follow me. See, this is actually an old home. It's originally built in the uh, early 19th century, but uh, we're gonna head inside here. Wow, so these are all just graves that were lost and, and discarded. Yeah, I think the one that got broken up, they replaced it, they got hit by what? They were digging it up. You said that sometimes you try to take rubbings to see yeah. where they're supposed to go. Trying to. <laughs> this one especially we figure out we know where it needs to go. By using find a grave and a friend of mine, you're gonna laugh, his name is Willie Nelson. Oh wow. <laughs> but he's like Moundsville's unofficial photogra photographer. Yeah. He gets every event, every place, he has at least a file on Flickr with at least two hundred pictures of each place on it. So using some of his pictures and find a grave, we figured out where she where this needs to go. Here we got some different bricks from some uh, different locations. It's an Emmett House brick. So we have some soil samples here from different significant locations. I noticed the Silver Bridge site. That's the uh, bridge that uh, collapsed during the Mothman saga. And then there's great uh, from Chief Cornstalk's burial site, Point Pleasant, who is sometimes associated with the. Mothman events. Yeah, she got that? that with permission from uh, one of his descendants. Oh yeah. Yeah, her um, first name was Cheyenne, but her uh, her Native American name, I guess you say, was Fawn. And uh, I sat and talked with her for almost an hour. Oh, and, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, she was a real, you know, real memorable experience. You know, getting to talk with her and and learn, you know, about her family and. Absolutely. I don't know if one of the bunker, TNT bunker stuff. What's the Devil's Den in Gettysburg? Interesting fact with that, my friend Mike, um, he went to this one particular trip to Gettysburg. He's big into uh, Civil War because one of his, um, basically he's related to Stonewall. Oh, wow. Jackson. Uh, so anything involving Civil War, he's all about it. But he went one time and got me a bunch of different dirt samples from where um, he went to. Of course, you see here, this one's from Devil's Den. And there's a stone back there that came with it. But interesting enough, what was in this, he said when he, when he got back to the uh, hotel, out of this dirt sample, there was actually a wooden button in it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he said, of course, he's more knowledgeable than I am with it. He said this more than likely would have come from Hood's division, the Confederacy. Because of Confederate blood. Now this is nuts here. This is grave sod from all of Jack the Ripper's victims. Elizabeth Stride, is that Jamie Chapman, Mary Nichols, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Kelly. And over here, this is dirt from the grave of H.H. H. Holmes. And then dirt from the actual site of the H.H. H. Holmes murder castle, which I've not actually been there. It's, the murder castle's not there anymore, but it's a, it's a post office now. This card here says, Sacred Memory of the Titanic. Apparently this was the card sent out to the victims, the, the, the company that ran the Titanic, sent this out to the victims of the Titanic almost, 
almost as like a, a sympathy card. It says in sacred memory of the Titanic, which collided with an iceberg off uh, Cape Race on April 15, 1912, the most appalling disaster in maritime history. Uh, these items were just donated, so I'm figuring out where exactly I'm going to put them. Okay, and what did you say these were? These were, uh... This is a anesthesia machine from the military. Oh, wow. 1945. It's missing a part. I need, I'm going to try to find it. It's... And there's a lot of this is mortuary equipment here? Yes, this is, these are the two uh, embalming tables I have. So that's an yeah. embalming machine right there? Yes. Yeah, that pump, the machine, this table, and the gurney came from Mimes Funeral Home in New Martinsville, West Virginia. And that table right there behind you uh, came from Nelson Funeral Home in Sistersville, West Virginia. So you can see how the this is meant where all the yes. fluids and juices all run down into that one little drain. This actually came from the funeral home that my uh, great-grandfather Walter Jennings was uh, prepared and shown at. Oh wow, so, so more than likely he would have been on. Probably uh, been uh, here on here. And I'm, I'm really glad I was able to get this because it was being used as a Halloween prop in someone's front yard. Oh, no. And, I mean, <laughs> it would fit the part for Halloween. But oh, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. But you got to think, you know, people's loved ones were taking care of on these. Yeah. There's got to be at least a little bit of reverence with that, I think. And those, <laughs> uh, the camera, the uh, ghost, the hack shack, and the recorders, um, those are what my friends and I first started our YouTube channel on. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. What's the name of your YouTube channel? Oh, it's uh, called Paranormal Quest. Uh, we uh, shoot full-length documentary series, Paranormal Investigations. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a passion. It's a hobby. It's a life. <laughs> you know, a I know fun. how that is. And then look at this. We got a strand of Marilyn hair, right there. And you said you're gonna, you're working on working on getting that cloned. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Here we got all the various tubes and poles and whatnot that be used to stick into your body and drain you of your uh, juices. And here we have the little chapel. And this would be an infant yes. coffin, I assume. I put the little flowers in the picture there because um, it apparently was used, so there's some discoloration there, so that just kind of hides the... Yeah, from what, I, what I've heard that they would actually use, they would recycle it, they would use it multiple times and then they would move it to a less expensive container to for the burial. See the old wooden uh, coffin there. And then this is a wicker coffin. And Steve was explaining that this is for basically to make sure that someone is dead while they were calling for a do doctor out of town. They would place someone in here. It would keep the bugs off them, the elements off them. They might be dead, but who knows, they might be alive, so give them a few air holes while they wait for the doctor to declare them dead. All right, as so we head up the yeah, stairs time. here, the uh, paranormal oh, items okay. are up here on the second floor. All right, so I'm up here alone with all these haunted items. So we head into the doll room. Now as we look around here at uh, these dolls. Every single one of these has a story, has something connected to it, something that made someone feel like something was not right. They invoked strange feelings, or they moved, or did something that just wasn't quite right. This is Sarah here. It says that Sarah actually emits negative energy that induces people to have uh, strong negative feelings when near her. Admit her eyes give me the give me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. Steve was saying these two dolls were from Florida that a family was so uncomfortable having them in the house that they were leaving them in their car at night. They didn't want to sleep in the same house as them because of the paranormal activity surrounding the doll. Hear noises. This is an old creaky house. So, okay, I think someone's actually drilling next door. This is the Delaware doll. I said that uh, this belonged to a man 
who had the doll in his house, and apparently the dog, his dog was so frightened, it wouldn't eat, wouldn't go outside, it would just shake, as long as the doll was in the house. So the animal was picking up on some possibly negative energy there, and uh, had to get rid of it, otherwise their dog would have starved. Some stuffed animals. It says that this tiger was given uh, to a little girl uh, by uh, her mother's fiance, who then he had um, passed away. And after he passed, apparently the tiger would move around the house, be found in random rooms, so that it was witnessed flying off of a piece of furniture. This is Charlie. He's a ventriloquist dummy. He was loaned to the museum by a family. Said that the uh, there's a boy and a girl in the home. Said that the son was terrified of it. He wanted it out of the house. Begged his mom to get rid of it. And the daughter had the opposite reaction. She would just stare at the ventriloquist dummy, laughing and laughing. I think it's creepy when they have no eyes. The rejected doll said that uh, people would uh, purchase this doll and then give it away because of the uneasy feeling that the dolls made. It says that occasionally the music box inside the doll will play by itself. It just says it gives people just kind of a, kind of a weird vibe. There's a version of Bozo the Clown. Here we have, oh, there's old uh, Mortimer Snurd, the famed ventriloquist doll. The doll's been painted in clown makeup. This is Ashen. This is a doll that was actually, apparently, someone urgently dropped this off here at the museum and just bolted. They just wanted gone with this doll, saying that uh, definitely has caused uncomfortable vibes people exuding uh, strange energy. So this is pretty pretty scary. This is they call this the mutilated effigy. It says that Steve was doing a uh, investigation in a house that had reported a lot of paranormal activity and that um, he went there he found this doll in uh, in the attic, he said it looks like it had been torn up, like someone intentionally had tried to destroy the doll. Um, so it immediately got bizarre, strange feelings, powerful feelings of energy from the doll. So the doll was left where it was and observed, uh, checked on every so often, and it, the doll would move around the attic by itself. And it said at one point, the doll picked up, if you see there's like the inside of a pen, so that was found in the doll's hand. It was not originally there. The doll had picked up part of a pen. That's pretty terrifying. Little pale Irish doll there. Some Native American dolls. Part of a ventriloquist dummy. As we walk down this hallway, they have haunted pictures. These are all pictures that reportedly given off strong energy, evoked feelings in people. Yeah, that one is definitely haunted. <laughs> this is kind of their assorted collection in here. Various items, various paranormal items that people have donated to the museum. These three little nun dolls. 
I do really like this lampshade right here. That I'm gonna get one of those for, for the bunker. Here is a little toy horse. Says that this is known to uh, randomly appear and change locations in the house. Says that this clock belonged to an old lady. And uh, when she passed away, when she died, the clock stopped on her exact moment of death and never worked again. Now this is something right here. These are strands of hair. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, you can see them right there. These belong to Marie Laveau, the voodoo queen of New Orleans, one of the most well-known uh, folk legends in New Orleans. We should definitely clone her too. It's a collection of Ouija boards here. And actually, let me ask, let's put this out here. I've always called it a Ouija board. Um, is it Ouija or Ouija? Leave a comment in the comment section on how you think that's pronounced. And in addition to the Ouija boards, have Kreskin's, Kreskin's ESP. So a board game by Milton Bradley. It would teach you how to read your parents' minds. So it says that during a paranormal communication session, a strong female presence was felt in this mirror here. Hmm. Here's the room based off of institutions and asylums. These chairs, stools. Kimbro Army Hospital. Old bed there. And look at this blanket here. It's actually from the Battle Creek Sanitarium in Battle Creek, Michigan. These here are pretty spooky. This is a Red Cross uh, nurse's outfit. It was used during World War I. You can actually see it still has blood stains on it. Okay, so we are now headed into what is called the dark room. Um, they said that all the items that have excessive dark energy or consider potentially dangerous are sectioned in this room here. So they always give guests an option to not go in here if they do not want to. But I think we will um, check this out. The 666 Bible said that uh, someone, an urbex explorer, an urban exploration explorer, found this Bible while uh, doing some urban exploring. It was open to page 666. He took it home and his life fell apart. He had physical problems, he had family problems, and then one night he looked out into his yard and saw three shadow figures staring in the yard at, at him and he decided he didn't want the Bible anymore after that. You know I'm a logical person but I must say yeah this room gives me I don't know intense feelings if that makes sense. So reading here about the Betsy Bell doll oh man it's, uh, this, 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 this is a this is a very spooky doll. Um, see some salt there in the box. It must be used for like maybe a cleansing ritual, that said reportedly. Um, the style would actually mimic people's voices to confuse them. Said that, uh, that they had recorded her saying the word Beelzebub, which is not a good sign. And then she has said, uh, pick me up multiple times. And says so that, that uh, people have noticed movements in her legs. Oh my gosh. Let's just, let's just appreciate this doll here for a moment. Because that is some intense activity. This is Hope. She is a 
three foot tall doll. So that there have been reports of her moving by herself here actually in the museum. They have noticed her moving. They've caught her on camera, shifting and moving. So we'll just uh just look at her here for a second. A close up of her face. This is the chanting doll. Apparently um, it gives off noises, and vibrations. I'm just going to touch it there for a moment. It gives off vibrations. It's found in an attic in Columbus, Ohio. Because they don't know the actual origins of it. It said that it gives off almost like drum-like vibrations. Now this doll, this ventriloquist doll here, may give... <laughs> This gives off some vibes to me. Um, I don't know, maybe I just remind, reminds me of that scene in Poltergeist, but apparently this style causes cold spots. Um, people are uneased by the way that it's looking, and people, I almost don't even want to say it, people have reported um, seeing him turn his head. And he turned his head to look at them. If he turned his head to look at me right now, I would jump out that window. This is a cross here that was actually used in an exorcism. This here is a poppet. It's a, a doll used in voodoo rituals. And you know, not all these have markers, but uh, some definitely exude those interesting feelings. I swear, this guy. Oh man. You. This is Rebecca the Nun. She was uh, retrieved from a room in a home in Ohio where a uh, mentally ill woman was, was locked in to the room. It says that this dog gives off a very strong energy and uh says strong negative energy to anyone who comes in contact or close proximity so tell me about this mirror back here uh, the mirror right here um came from a really old cabin down in logan county west virginia and um we won't delve too deep into names because this past weekend uh there was a a huge family tragedy um, from, um, involving the family that owns the property. Uh, we, uh, about three, I think three, three years ago, uh, my friends and I with Paranormal Quest went down to investigate um, the cabin and some interesting things happened down there. I noticed the, I had noticed the mirror uh, while we were down there on that trip and I felt really pulled to it to, to investigate uh, that area. Uh, we all did. But what happened during that investigation kind of pulled us away from that, so it kind of became out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Um, like our friend Jason, um, he got scratched. Multiple things happened down there. It was just a really, really creepy place, really charged place. But um, after the investigation, for almost, say, a year and a half, almost two years, all I would periodically think about was the mirror. Like, I just felt really connected to it. Um, I never really figured out why. But we got permission to go back a second time, and us, um, well, the lady um, who is one of the owners of the property gave me permission to to have the mirror because I told her I have a museum. We do research with items yeah. that we feel have certain energies or qualities attached to them. So with permission, I was able to procure the mirror. But we believe, with all the um, history of the property of the cabin that we believe that the mirror is some kind of a portal uh, for any or all of the spirits involved with the cabin. I mean, there's rumors that there are people buried in the, the cabin's basement that dates back to the uh, uh, their great-grandfather who owned the property and, and you know, and settled there uh, to um, different forms of, uh, we'll just say, religious practices Yeah. at that location. But... Um, it's uh, it's been a really interesting uh, item. 
that, that we've had here uh, at the archive. Uh, now, this coin here that you were interested in, this came from the first investigation. This is an Israeli uh, coin for five shekels. Um, this coin appeared in one of our friend's pockets. So just... We've tried to figure out, other than she had it in her pocket and didn't realize it, and if it were like an American coin or yeah. Canadian coin, so okay. she would have had no reason to have. No, the only thing that she said she pocket. kept in that pocket was her e her e cig. So yeah, basically, it looks like five five shekels. Yes. Wow. So just almost manifested in the out of out of nowhere into her pocket. Yeah, and the creepy history behind that property is every male family member that lived in the cabin, either in the cabin or shortly after leaving the cabin, died. And between the first and second investigation we did, a a kid came down to uh, to their house and asked if he can go down to the cabin and ship it for copper. And she said, when we talked to her, uh, when we were down there, um, that she said that I wouldn't go down there. She didn't say no. She said I wouldn't go down mm -hmm. there. And oddly enough, three days after that, that boy right above their house on the main, just a country road. I mean, they're half hour, forty minutes outside of Logan, West Virginia, which is like boondocks. Yeah. You know? uh, he was found dead up on the road. Oh my gosh. And three days after that, there's a, there's we've noticed with this case, and there's always a um, some kind of relation with the number three. Three days after that. You know, just this past weekend, three family members were lost their lives. We'll just put it that way. They lost their lives, and it's just it's just been crazy. You know, we were we were supposed to go down there this past weekend to investigate for this for this Halloween season yeah. for our YouTube channel. But then that incident happened. We could have been down there when it happened. Oh wow! Yeah. You know, you know we don't because the cabin is like fifty yards away from the house that the the tragedy happened in. So. <laughs> it's that's why it's hard to say what's connected to it. Really, it really is. That's why we're we're always trying to do some research with it. And of course, other teams come in for our for our, you know our our private investigations and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to say the least. Yeah, I mean this room definitely is not giving me very uh, very positive vibes at all. Okay. So in this little case right here, um, I definitely wanted to share with you, is a plaster casting from the original mold of John Dillinger's death mask. So cool. here it is right here for you. Yeah, so this was actually taken from the original cast. And you can see the wounds I uh, received on his cheeks and stuff like that. Huh. If you look pretty closer to it. Now in the other case here um, are a few Items involving, what to say, like criminology and stuff like that. Um, some multiple things here. These uh, letters here are related to, to the Sunset Strip killers out in California. Okay. Um, this chunk here is from the Ed Gein murder farm. Oh, what is that? Is it a piece of wood? Yeah, it's from the, off the property there. This is a postcard signed by Charles Manson. What's that say? Just don't have the time, easy, Charles Miles Manson. So. <laughs> he didn't always make the most sense. No. Interesting, though. <laughs> Interesting. I heard a thud. Had no problems. It's just a little sod sample from the front yard of John Wayne Gacy's house. Okay, that's in Chicago. Yeah. Right there. And this right here is what a lot of people come to see. This right here is the actual execution cap oh to Old Sparky. This is the West Virginia electric chair? Former West Virginia State Penitentiary. So that has been on the heads of people as they've been executed. Any 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 idea how many? Nine. There were nine, nine people, people those that were the killed yeah. using that. Cap. So what is it? Does it have metal on it? or? Yeah, metal here. Can I touch it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's mostly metal. This is and then this is a leather, leather right here, but that's just a metal piece. And these are copper, copper, which is highly conductive. Okay, so that helps conduct electricity. Yeah. Oh and my underneath gosh. Of it, if you look uh, 
right here. See how it's kind of smoothed out right here? Yeah. That's where the clips would have went on uh, from the from the cables. Okay, so they li li cl clipped it there. Oh, it's so yeah. it's so primitive and yeah. how it worked. Uh, see, a lot of people go, just a chunk of metal. A lot of people go. This doesn't look like your typical cap to an electric chair. Yes, they're correct. But the thing is, though, this cap um, and the chair at the former West Virginia State Penitentiary were made inside the prison. They made by made by inmate Paul Glenn. A uh, little Bible, if you will. But this Bible belonged to serial killer Eileen Warnos. Oh, wow. When she was on death row. It's a very unassuming item, too. It's just the one minute Bible. Okay, so it's like a. And this uh, bookmark was in there on that page. Um, I've done that was left in there by it. her. Yeah. Nothing really. Um, is she marking it at all? Not really. One of them had like a little bit of scribble in it. I can't remember exactly where it is. I haven't really messed with it. So thank you for joining me here at the Archive of the Afterlife Paranormal Museum. I did want to let you know to check out uh, Steve's YouTube channel um, where they, him and his team go into a more in-depth uh, look at some of these items. It's uh, Paranormal Quest on YouTube, so check that out if you're interested in uh, further investigating some of the items that we saw today. Uh, thank you for watching. If uh, you'd like to subscribe, I'll let you know when new videos are coming out. I've been to the uh, 48 continental United States filming roadside attractions, museums, haunted houses, and amusement parks. And I upload uh, almost every day, maybe every other day is, is more accurate. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to Patreon, $3 or more. We'll get you a postcard once a month. Also uh, selling pins in the Etsy shop, all that just helps keep this train on the tracks, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's, it's in the back. <laughs>